Today we will be studying the effect of our compound on the cell cycle using flow cytometry. Cell cycle is a series of steps that a cell undergoes from its birth or formation to reproduction which results in two new daughter cells. In eukaryotic cells, the cell is divided into two main phases, interphase and mitotic phase. During interphase, the cell replicates its DNA, while during mitosis, the cell separates its DNA into two sets and forms two new daughter cells. Interphase consists of phases G1, S, and G2. During G1 phase, also known as first gap phase, the cell grows in size and copies organelles in order to prepare for the following steps. S phase refers to the synthesis, and this is when the cell copies and synthesizes DNA. So in this phase, there are elevated levels of DNA within the cell. During G2, or the second gap phase, the cell grows more and makes proteins and organelles in order to prepare for mitosis. Then we have the M phase, or mitosis. This is when the cell divides its copied DNA and cytoplasm in order to make two new daughter cells. When a new cell is created, the cycle begins all over. The most common way to study the cell cycle is with flow cytometry. This is a laser-based technology that measures fluorescence intensity. The basic principle of flow cytometry is that a single file of cells pass through a laser which scans the cells and results in cell count and cell sorting depending on expression of cell surface and intracellular molecules. For this assay, a DNA fluorescent dye is used. Once the dye binds to the DNA and is excited with a laser, it will emit a fluorescent signal. Since the dye binds to DNA proportionately, the amount of fluorescent signal is representative of the amount of DNA present. We will be working with a dye that you may be familiar with, propidium iodide. We previously used PI in our cytotoxicity assay. Because PI is not permeable to cell membranes, we will be permeabilizing and fixing our cells in order to stain DNA for cell cycle analysis. So let's begin our experiment. We begin on day one by plating our cells in a six-wall plate. This is done by following the same steps that we used in our previous video for cell passaging. Briefly, we first rinse the excess FPS and media from our flasks. We then proceed to trypsinize our cells in order to detach from our flask. Then, we inactivate the trypsin using complete media containing FBS, making sure that we achieve a single cell suspension. Finally, we count our cells using tripe and blue exclusion method as described in our previous video. We can then see the appropriate number of cells and incubate the plate in order to allow the cells to attach. During day two, we will be adding our compound and control treatments. All treatments will be administered as duplicates and will follow the diagram as shown. The only difference is that we will be using five concentrations instead of one. After 24 hours of incubation, we will proceed with our cell cycle analysis. First, we begin by aliquoting the supernatant from each of the wells into previously labeled 15 ml conical tubes. The reason for keeping the supernatant is to keep the floating cells, which are undergoing mitosis or may be dead after the treatment. Next, we have to harvest the cells from a plate. We do so by trypsinizing them with 1 ml of trypsin. We then incubate our plate at 37 degrees for 3 minutes in order to allow the trypsin to work. Similar to passaging cells, we will be inactivating our trypsin using RPMI media containing FBS. We are adding the media to all wells at once in order to stop the trypsin from working. We will then proceed to work on individual wells. After all cells are detached from the plate, we will transfer each well to the appropriately labeled tube. Here we are rinsing each well with a media in order to rinse off any cells that may remain attached to the surface.
We will repeat the same procedure with every single well, making sure that we gather as many cells from each well as possible. Once all the wells have been transferred to tubes, we will center future cells for 5 minutes at 1200 RPM. After the cells finish centrifuging, you can see there's a pellet at the bottom of the tube. Now we want to discard the supernatant after verifying that a cell pellet has formed. This is easily done by inverting the tube over a waste container in order to decant the supernatant. The cell pellet will remain intact as long as the tube is handled with care. The cells will then be washed using cold PBS. The purpose of this is to remove the excess media and FBS. As you can see from the bottom of the tube, we have not resuspended our pellet. We will now do so by gently vortexing our cells. We can also resuspend by pipetting up and down several times. This is followed by another centrifugation step. Here you can see our cells have once again pelleted and we can easily discard the supernatant by inverting the tube over a waste container. When the PBS has been removed from all tubes, we will proceed to fix and permeabilize with 70% ethanol. It is important to vortex the tube while we add the 70% ethanol in order to prevent aggregation of our cells. Ethanol fixation and permeabilization is an important step when working with PI. If you remember from our cytotoxicity assay, PI is not permeate to living cells. Therefore, permeabilizing them with ethanol will allow the PI to enter the cell membrane and stain the DNA. We will now incubate our tubes with a 70% ethanol for 15 minutes on ice. This is also followed by a centrifugation step. We are now working under low light conditions since PI is light sensitive. Here we are removing the ethanol solution from the pellet. This time we will not be inverting our tubes. We will gently pipette or aspirate the liquid out of the tube. Then we will add our PI solution. We will be resuspending each pellet in 500 microliters of the PI solution. The solution is stored protected from light by wrapping it with aluminum foil. If you refer to your manual, you will see that the PI solution also contains RNAs. Because PI can bind both DNA and RNA, we use RNAs in order to degrade RNA that is present in the sample. This will leave mostly DNA for PI to bind to. We will now resuspend our pellets by gently vortexing. You can also resuspend the pellet by pipetting up and down.
Now we will incubate our cells with PI for 40 minutes. We are almost done with our experiment. We are now just adding 3 mLs of PBS and following up with a centrifugation. In order to remove the PBS, we will once again pipette out or aspirate gently in order to prevent disturbing the pellet. Finally, we are resuspending our pellet in 500 microliters of PBS. We are also transferring our cell suspension to round bottom tubes that are suitable for flow cytometer. We are now done with the bench work and can proceed to the cell cycle analysis using the flow cytometer. After running our samples on the flow cytometer, we will have a cell population histogram in respect to PI fluorescent intensity. The amount of PI fluorescent intensity is correlated to the amount of DNA within each cell at different stages of the cell cycle. This difference in intensities can be visualized by looking at the peaks pertaining to each of the phases of the cell cycle. You will now receive your last set of data for the semester.